Welcome everyone uh, to our webinar on Reversing the Funnel, part of our Content and Commerce Convergence series. I'm Norman Rosenberg. I'm a director at Frog. Uh, Frog is our creative consultancy, part of Capgemini Invent, and uh, we look at business, brand, experience, activation, and enablement. Today, we're going to talk a little bit around how the funnel is reversing. And it's really important that we're understanding, looking at a complex marketing and commerce ecosystem. And we're particularly interested in that convergence and that meeting of content and commerce. Social platforms are building native shopping functionality. Retailers are maximizing their retail media networks. And traditional commerce platforms are enhancing their interfaces. It is on these social channels that the traditional funnel from brand awareness to brand distribution is now converging, collapsing, or as our hypothesis states, reversing. Physical availability and mental awareness are now just different starting points in a funnel that has reversed. Data is inevitably driving this reversal with the convergence of unstructured declarative data and structured intentional behavior meeting in the middle. This dynamic is also affecting creative briefs, media buying, and content. And as we can see, the medium is the store, and the store is the medium. This is the change that is happening now. That's why we're here today with a panel of experts who I'm excited to announce, an all-female panel with me as the token male. So that's great to see. I'm just going to give a quick intro to the panelists. I'm going to start with Ksenia Barton. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ksenia. I'm very happy to be here. Thank Welcome. you for inviting. I'm a creative strategist uh, at TikTok, uh, and I'm helping brands uh, to create best-in-class campaigns, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we are educating uh, brands also how to do the best organically and paid. Uh, before uh, TikTok, I've been working at Lego uh, for six uh, uh, years uh, as a brand and comms uh, strategist. Uh, and uh, uh, before that, I've been on the agency side in Publicis Sapient. So this way, I've just been trying to cover all sides of marketing from agency, brand, and now the platform. Thank you very much. It's an interesting mix. And now perhaps Audrey Madden from Huel, you could introduce yourself quickly and give a brief bio. That would be yeah, great. Of course. I'm Audrey. I'm the creative strategist as well at Huel. Um, and I also lead the in-house creative team at Huel. So I do a lot of our BAU, like we have this whole performance marketing machine that we have functioning day to day. But then I also do like the longer term campaign ca um, planning as well. And before that, I was agency side, um, a branding agency, so very different from Huel, very much more about the longer term and um, just kind of the creative idea rather than the data. So it's really cool to have a mix of experience there. Thank you very much, Audrey. Um, and uh, we've got Alicia Jitaru, who is, uh, perhaps introduce yourself. You're sure. at Mars at the moment, I know. Sure. Thank you for having me, Norman. Uh, so yeah, I'm Alicia, and a little bit about me. Um, I've been working in marketing for 12 years um, in FMCG uh, in categories such as beauty, um, toys and entertainment, home care, and currently as a EU brand director at Mars in pet food. Yeah, I've had sort of all, uh, all sorts of role, uh, roles in marketing from local, regional to global in companies such as Lego, uh, Coty, PNG, um, and this topic today is of particular interest to me because I've seen sort of the theme that we're discussing today reflected in the pet food category trends as of as of recent. So, yeah, I'm super super happy to be here today. Lovely to have you. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> flying in hot from Cannes, Mary <laughs> from Red. Perhaps you want to introduce yourself a little bit. Thanks, Norman. Excited to be here today. So my name is Mary, and I am on the Ads Partnerships team here at Reddit in London. I've been working with Reddit for the last three years, so we've seen a lot of growth, which is really exciting, expanding into new markets such as the UK. Previous to Reddit, I was working at Twitter and at um, Pinterest, so 
Can't seem to shake social. I'm really excited to be here today with a bunch of ladies plus Norman <laughs> um, and specifically Thank talk you. about creative. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. And um, what a great panelist. And thank you all for turning up. Let, let's kick off with, with, with one question. So traditionally, marketing has been content rich, but now we're seeing a kind of convergence of commerce, brands and content. And it's all sort of blurring. Maybe, Audrey, you could, you could open with how, how, how are you kind of taking advantage or or looking into this opportunity at Hewell or in, in a wider sense? Yeah, I think it's a perfect question to kick off on because it's quite overarching. Yeah. So at Hewell, I think we're in the opposite position that a lot of legacy established brands are in, where over the past seven years, we've been in this state of like really high growth. We have this performance marketing machine that's functioning really well, and it's worked for us up until now. But we're now having, we're finding ourselves in this conversation, like the same conversation in a lot of our meetings where it's like, okay, no, now, now what? Like we do need to start thinking about long-term legacy because otherwise I think my belief is it's going to be just that, it's that short term, like it's going to last and it's going to dwindle out. The area that I find the most fascinating with this is creative because I find like I spent a lot of time working out like what does creative look like at different stages of the funnel? Like how does it look different in the lower funnel and direct response and then upper funnel brand awareness. And I found it's very left brained and it's very logical and it's product focused and you have to speak in a totally different way where like as you go up the funnel, it has to be more emotional and it has to be more narrative based. And what I find so interesting in Huel is like we struggle to have those conversations in a good way. It's a challenging thing for us to be like, okay, do we just be emotional? Do we take the risk without that, like the data to back it? Like what we can't track it, what do we do? So that's really fascinating. It's interesting you talk about that and, and we're kind of seeing those trends around from social with people starting at that kind of lower funnel and that's kind yeah. of, I mean, it's a bit of a, a hypothesis and a conjecture about it reversing, but that kind of product availability driving that data. I don't know, yeah. perhaps Alicia, if, you, if you're seeing similar kind of trends in Mars or not. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it, it all comes probably with the revolutionizing and the digitalization, right, of the world we live in, which was really expedited by COVID, right? So, I don't know, brands that haven't even thought about having a D2C presence all of a sudden are now on D2C, including Mars brands. But in pet food in particular, a third of the pet food purchases are happening actually online and four out of five under 30s are digitally engaged when shopping pet food. So that means that also things like ratings and review or search are very important in driving awareness, whereby in the past maybe we looked at other ways of, of driving awareness. Now these things are sort of hygiene factors. Yeah. Mary, how do you find brands are responding to, to this convergence and how, how have people come to you in a, in a different way than perhaps a, your previous employees and where are you seeing this trend coming now? Yeah, yeah, I think like there's two key themes that are emerging where brands are really winning in this convergence and those being measurement and creative. So from the measurement perspective, it's so important to look beyond the last click at where users are finding your ads because the reality is, especially with more and more social advertising, users are not going to these social platforms to purchase. They're going to be inspired to learn something new, to be distracted. So you're losing out on a lot of conversions if you're just looking at that last click. So we have a lot more brands looking at multi-touch attribution solutions that are looking at every touch point in the user journey to properly attribute. And then from the creative perspective, I think it's really important for brands, if they want to focus more on e-commerce, not to forget about that education and that upper funnel piece, because it just it comes to a point where you've reached all of the users with your 30% offer. So making sure that you're educating and that creative, you're adding value, and still driving users to to the e-commerce site to shop. That's where I see a lot of brands winning and investing in creative that's educational and value add. And I think Mary said it right. Almost every touch point becomes an opportunity to engage and potentially convert, but also like create an experience, right? Because 
people tend to engage and convert and buy brands that offer them this sort of experience. And the more personalized the experience, the better. So I think there's also this importance of building this sort of one-on-one -on -one relationships mm -hmm. with your users, with your audience. And the brands that do that, I think, are the brands that probably are winning. To add to your point, so just traditionally, when we've been planning comps, especially for traditional and heritage brands, we've been uh, kind of like planning channels, touch points, uh, like what channels uh, can deliver better this or that objectives from awareness uh, to conversion. And usually social being for awareness and engagement, and then like Amazon will drive our conversion. I think when we are blurring these lines, yeah. we finally can create experiences, smart and smooth experiences within the platform to achieve your objectives across uh, the funnel and back. And uh, uh, to uh, your point also about like not forgetting to build uh, um, the uh, legacy and uh, uh, credibility and establish your uh, uh, brand, uh, sometimes to see brands are forgetting kind of like that and uh, doing uh, like this like promotions after promotion selling selling and uh, uh, pandemic really showed us that brands who survived and uh, got benefits out of the situations are brands which establish their names and credibility and in the IPA paper uh, less uh, uh, by it um, uh, like showed us that it's very important not forget uh, to uh, build uh, your brand uh, name while you are also like um, doing the sales and uh, that's really affecting. Interesting point because I think that's the kind of central thesis we've got about reversing the funnel. Actually almost what you said Audrey, you've built kind of the social lower funnel and now kind of what does that brand salience, brand awareness look look like and actually I guess how, how did you see your creative evolving a, a, a little bit from the kind of social channels and building D2C into a expandable extensible brand if you like I'm just intrigued and perhaps with the platforms yeah. I don't know why I'm looking at you but just because no, I, just I love you all so much <laughs> I think like when we first we're thinking, okay, we need to do more brand awareness. We were looking at TV ads. That's kind of the classic. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. like, and then there's obviously yeah, yeah. there's connected TV out there, which yeah. is kind of a good middle ground. And we found ourselves we found ourselves in this trap of like, okay, we're gonna go for this TV ad. We're gonna do this emotional story, and then all of a sudden, we're feeding back to our agency, and we're kind of Frankensteining. It's like, oh no, we want it to be about the product, and we want to <laughs> sell. And like, it ended up in this piece of creative that really didn't work. So I do think, at least for us, and we've tried it a few times. Even example of like doing a big photography campaign and then you have that image you have that one-liner you put it as a Facebook ad and it doesn't work for us yeah yeah so they do kind of for us they do need to be separate if you have this like one overarching creative idea then how do you hit that brief uniquely for each platform like it really has to be tailored to it you can't like trickle down as much as we want to yeah yeah <laughs> that would make it easier it, it's interesting that and it's almost like for your brands, and I guess, Alicia, you, you've got the opposite of trying to drive into those social channels with the, the support of um, Reddit and, and TikTok, but you're starting in a different point, and everyone seems to want to flip it to that social D to C starting point and push out from there. How do traditional brands respond to this? Because, you know, th there's clearly platforms and communities forming, but how do you find yourself responding to this? No, I think that's a great question, and it's part of a, a lot of debate that I'm having with the D2C team, for example, right? Because, as you say, Norman, traditional brands and the way we're sort of working um, with our assets, with our comms assets, is we have an overarching campaign idea. We have sort of a leading TV copy or online video, and then we go ahead and please don't kill me ladies but like we cut them into the six second social ads no. right <laughs> and then and then my d2c guys like alicia you're never going to engage consumers with your six second cut ads you need to create content uh, you know for these channels for your social media presence that will you know truly be like eye-catching and engaging and will convert to purchase so um we, we started testing you know as a solution right like we started 
testing with some more agile agencies um, concepts that are still true, obviously, to our brand compass and to the brand, but don't necessarily cascade down from that, you know, overarching online video, which, which we cut. And then potentially, if it works, we might even sort of develop these assets to use them through the funnel. So that's at the moment like what the sweet spot that we that we found between those more traditional approaches and, and the new ones that yeah that, that the social people are pushing for, which rightfully so they are. <laughs> I have a piece of advice for brands that are just like so traditional and just repurposing their TV ads because one, I do think to Audrey's case it is really important for brands to have tailored strategies for each social channel, but that could be so daunting, especially if you're not sure if Reddit's going to work or TikTok's going to work. So I think just starting with something quite simple, such as repurposing those assets and then modifying the copy. So it's just really actually a light lift of just speaking to the communities directly. And I don't know if you have any tip from TikTok. Yeah, yeah maybe I will challenge a bit uh, because yeah. like, personally, um, I'm kind of like, I see how this approach, and we've been having it a lot at uh, Lego as well, having one TV spot and kind of like, like, cut it according like uh, different specs and put it on Facebook or on YouTube as a pre-roll and on Instagram, like maybe as a pictures and maybe that will work fine. But what we saw like this way, uh, it didn't work well. It worked well for TV. So my kind of like piece of advice sometimes is like, pick your battles, pick your platforms where your audience is and do it really, really well. Because like, especially on TikTok, it's such a unique, I would say, like pl platform, the same as Reddit stuff on uh, Instagram, probably won't work on Reddit. Like we see it doesn't work uh, on uh, TikTok because it's not about polished uh, uh, images. It's not even about images. It's about authentic, authentic uh, yeah. yeah, authenticity. And uh, uh, so we actually like, sometimes advice just refilm your concept uh, and on the native camera like on your phone uh, with real people in their real bathrooms not in the studio uh, and uh, just like nail one uh, channel and do it really well they're very unique platform with unique people and trying to serve to everybody it might end up with serving to nobody one good example how traditional brand huge heritage brand is doing it amazing L'Oreal like on TikTok, they just like totally left this kind of like polished images uh, and they are doing really authentic approach. They're doing great uh, social commerce. They are doing live stream, shoppable live stream, pushing uh, D2C uh, agenda. They are uh, like they launched a TikTok uh, shop recently and also playing with this uh, uh, phenomenon of uh, hashtag TikTok made me buy it, mm -hmm. uh, which just now got over 14 billion uh, mentions it's just like it's crazy and it like Amazon even Amazon added like what went viral uh, section which kind of uh, TikTok made me uh, buy it and uh, so they're really tailoring and playing with the functionality but on Instagram, it's totally different it's uh, uh, and a lot of fashion and beauty brands are doing it brilliantly yeah so so, so that's interesting I, I guess to both of you are you finding that in brands kind of mark, you're sort of cannibalizing the traditional above the line marketing budget into that. There are some uh, brands who are actually like uh, moving a big chunk uh, of money and it all depends on the audience. If yeah. your audience is in social and more and more young people, Gen Zers are yeah, yeah. living like TV. So like why to still kind of invest uh, on TV? But if you're selling, I don't know, River Cruise, uh, however, there are a lot of over uh, 50 years old uh, uh, people on TikTok, uh, but mm -hmm. probably like don't allocate your all the budget in TikTok. Uh, like you still need like channels where you like where your audience is. So I think it's uh, you like need to chase your audience. I would say there's a really big shift in brands thinking about Reddit in that consideration stage, and that yeah. really is like the strength of the platform too. Yeah. People are coming to to research products and get advice from strangers. Um, so we are seeing a lot like your L'Oreal example, they're actually doing an amazing job where traditionally 
they are TV ads, but I see them doing a lot of like one-to-one, -one, yep. like connecting with the yeah. specific community, listening to them and adding value, whether that be through like educational, these are my curly hair tips for the curly hair community on Reddit. Another example of brands just like connecting with that middle stage of the funnel, which I think can still drive down to lower funnel is like actually engaging with Redditors. So um, Fidelity is an example of a brand that I think has really nailed this in the US. So they're finance, very traditional investing brand. I would not think that they would be really leading the space yeah. in terms of like innovation, but yeah. they have nailed what they're doing on Reddit because they've leaned into the strengths of the platform. So they do a lot of AMAs on the platform, which are Ask Me Anything, where they have someone who is there to help with investing advice, um, and Redditors eat that up. We have so many finance enthusiasts on the platform. So I think that mid funnel is becoming more and more important that I'm seeing on Reddit. Yeah, I totally agree. And more and more functionalities uh, uh, on social platforms, but also on the commerce platforms like Amazon, they are actually starting to enrich their live streaming. They're encouraging brands to do a lot of uh, video content. So this kind of like engagement, like even like chatbots and stuff. So it's kind of like in the middle and uh, uh, actually like uh, when like I've been launching chatbots, uh, at Lego, which is kind of like in the middle just of that. And we've been seeing a huge like uplift in sales when you are not losing kind of like this uh, um, element uh, as well. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's a uh, sometimes uh, missed element, uh, but uh, a lot of uh, Reddit, TikTok, with all of their functionalities now bringing it, uh, I think, uh, back to attention. Yeah, you know, our theme is content and commerce conversions, which is like, like all kind of themes a little bit trite, but it is, it is that sweet spot that's really coming and that separation. And I think it does sort of break up and we, we're finding with all our clients where they want to play is different. I mean, like every, all of our rather larger heritage brands want to become like a D to C. And I guess you guys are, are, are moving and that it's that middle ground that becomes the battleground, I guess, yeah. between you and I don't. I don't know, Alicia, in in, in your position in, in Mars, what are you doing, kind of, as an organisation, structurally or, or creatively, to to chase? And I guess we, we're talking about a bulge funnel rather than a reverse funnel. But I'll get back <laughs> to a reverse funnel at some stage. I think maybe we should also take into account that what we're seeing at the moment is that. We see a lot of like channelless commerce, right? And omni-channel commerce, which basically by default means that the assets you're creating or let's say your comms, you know, tactics yeah. and strategies cannot be geared anymore towards, you know, as as Roger was saying, like this is what I'm gonna do on TV and then everybody will come to store and purchase me, right? Yeah. So you have to your media brief or your integrated communication plan now now needs to cover all the channels, your part off sure. and you're part of you know offline online D to C, and you know people shop everywhere. So um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of the the maybe the big focus that we're having at the moment. But I think the beauty of all these sort of digital channels versus the more traditional ones is, in the past that's what we were doing, right? We were iterating on hundreds of concepts, testing them with consumers offline, and then deciding on one. Now you can actually, actually test them live, right? So you can test different sort of concepts and content on these platforms, on these digital platforms, get sort of the quick responses, right? And then decide, okay, which one resonated best with consumers. So I think that's, that's the beauty of this digital revolution for me. I mean, do, do you feel that kind of there's so much data that kind of the algorithm is is sucking creativity out of out of it all, and we we're so data driven from that kind of bottom, and we've got we know passions and personalities and everything that we can never make a step change, and it all becomes formulaic. Yeah, but that's great because that's, <laughs> that's great. No, I mean no, I mean like because you have yeah, but where's the big creative idea occasionally? <laughs> no, that's yeah. great. That's uh, like with this like. Uh, 
in order like to capture your yeah. data and to see yeah. even organically when you're producing your content that kind of like your small test is it relevant to your audience and you mm -hmm. can grow uh, this in the bigger awareness campaign and uh, also like this data and this audience that's your new focus groups like yeah. because exactly. traditionally like heritage brands are losing loads of time and, and, money. Uh, and money and there are loads of like studies now that like when you are taking people out of the context you're losing like a lot of actually true insights but your true insights are on reddit on TikTok, mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, and in comments when you're posting. So that's kind of like, uh, uh, so yeah, the speed, uh, agility, like, and that's like, that's your audience just there talking to you, just grab their insights and react. Yeah, so we have got loads of products like uh, Little Moons and loads of beauty brands who started on TikTok and now on the way to, yeah. but probably like a lot of UK uh, based audience would know Little Moons, Little, that started on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but from the bigger brands uh, who, I can say they started on TikTok, but they really expanded on TikTok is Gymshark. So Gymshark is really doing great way of reversing the funnel yeah. and opening a flagship store on the Oxford Street now. They are pure D2C brands who just kind of like on the way to make this uh, uh, up away funnel. What, what about you, Mary? I guess it's a slightly different play in, in terms of how, mm. how Reddit creates communities. I'm just intrigued of how the commerce comes out of some of your communities. I mean, I hate to pass the baton, but we've got Huel in the room and they really they have nailed it. Reddit and they're thinking about Upper Funnel. I don't know if you, you want to... Well, we love advertising on Reddit. It's such a playground. <laughs> it's so much fun. You just, all the wackiest ideas you get to really? just throw out there. I mean, same for TikTok. We're just newer with TikTok. I, I guess it's interesting where, where, where you, clearly you, you find your audience, your demographic and everyone's chasing after the, the Gen Z exactly. sitting on social platforms and I guess the strategy of, of search and, and how, you know, because search was the thing. How, how prevalent are you finding things like search? I'm going to focus a little away from the platforms or, or a bit more perhaps into, I won't say traditional, but <laughs> did you find yourself altering away from kind of search as being a, a bigger thing in the kind of product finding, merchandising, consideration place? It is a big focus, yeah. right? And maybe bigger than, than, than we think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you think about ourselves, yeah, yeah. right? And right. again, it depends on those key moments that yeah. you want to be present at, right? If you want to win with point of market entry, right? Yeah. Consumers, it's, it's, it's a given that they will use search because it's a big sort of influence for them. So it's, it's understanding probably like, indeed, like what's your audience? What, where are those key moments that they will interact with you and then what are the right, uh, yeah, sort of channels to invest in. Jumping on this as well, so that's something what Amazon is reporting that uh, actually people are going to Amazon to research. Yeah. Exactly. And like uh, also like on TikTok, it's became kind of like a shopping mall because because of your loved algorithm, actually, you're not really seeing <laughs> like what your friends are doing. And yeah. actually, we see that people like are less sometimes interested what uh, your friends are doing because you can have got like a chat. Yeah. But actually, they see what the world uh, uh, is doing and what is the next cool thing. And you're coming there as the virtual shopping mall, just seeing what is trendy, what is cool, what people are laughing, what people are buying, and maybe I will buy it. That's I think the yeah. phenomenon of TikTok made me buy it because the community is telling you this is like this is working this is great and uh, that's discoverability I think it's kind of like uh, maybe leaving a bit like traditional search engine and just becoming integrated in our digital um, experiences. Yeah. I think the Amazon example was great yeah. because I, I was reading somewhere like 55 percent of people who are sort of just familiarizing themselves with mm -hmm. the brand or you know, driving that awareness, it starts on Amazon. So it's really probably the perfect example of the convergence of the funnel. Yeah. I mean, I mean we're, we're clearly retail media and search on, on retailer sites, whether it be an Amazon or uh, uh, Tesco's or whoever is, is the growth, is the biggest sort of trend and growth in, in kind of search. And we, we're seeing a lot of it. I, I, we've got like three minutes left, so I'm going to do the, if, if there's one takeaway that you would want our audience to think about in terms of how 
funnels reversing, we talked about a kind of bulging middle, that convergence of commerce and commerce and content. M maybe words, a, a first word of wisdom from, from you, Mary, and perhaps we can do the panelists and then, then I'll wrap it up. So. Yeah, I mean, a lot of today went back to creative. So I think yeah. creative is king. Be human and add value. Make sure that there's add value exchange. I think I would echo that. It's it's really understanding sort of, as I said, where, you know, who's your audience, what's their presence in the digital universe, and creating those mutual value propositions and those experiences for them. Yeah. I'm going to go a bit rogue and recommend a book. Um, uh, Orlando Wood's book, Lemon, if you haven't read it, I'd really recommend it because it's just, it's a fascinating look at like lower funnel creative versus upper funnel and how they are kind of battling it out, but how eventually maybe there's a different end story. So a bit controversial at times, no, like good, good for thought starters. Orlando Wood, Lemon. Yeah. I'm going to make a note of that, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, maybe I would say that actually social commerce is here uh, and it is on TikTok and you can sell like pet food. But also like we've been talking about reversing like the funnel, which is working. But also let's not forget that it's also working great in the right way back with um, amazing tools which platforms now are offering. So it's just important to not forget about the um, about building your awareness and uh, credibility and your brand when you're doing it this way, but don't forget like to use all the possibilities of platforms going like that way. I think it's really interesting. We, we started with the kind of premise around the reverse funnel, and I think we've got a bulge funnel, we've got a two-way funnel, and we've got funnels kind of meeting in the middle. So, so it's an interesting thing, but the, there's definitely, I don't think the play out has happened with content commerce conversions, there's kind of obvious truths that, you know, uh, social commerce, I've got my stat here, has made 492 billion was sold that way. So, you know, that's a given. It's not, it's not a trend. It feels like the establishment. We need to do that. But uh, if you want some more information, we, we're going to project that. Please feel free out, free to reach us out. Uh, reach out to me. I, I fumbled my mm -hmm. words there. But again, thank you to, to all the panellists, to, to Mary, Alicia, Audrey and Zania for fantastic and really appreciate it. And I, I hope you, uh, I would say at home, given my <laughs> traditional broadcasting background, enjoyed it as well. And uh, thank you all. <laughs>